Wickershine wrote a book about culture, and he explained that culture is made up of three properties. We may think of these three cultural properties as peeling layers of an onion. The first layer being artifact. It is the visible part of the culture that can be observed in plain sight, such as the costume that people wear in particular culture, or the food that people eat、um, that is different from one culture to the other. สวัสดีครับผมชื่อแกรีครับผมมาจากประเทศอังกฤษครับผมอยู่ที่เมืองไทย12ปีแล้วครับ When、uh, when I was with my friends, with my travel court friends、uh, in Bangkok, there's、uh, the area Khao San Road.、Uh, they sell the scorpions and、uh, all the different bugs, and it's high high in protein. <laughs> yeah, it's good for the protein. But don't think that that is on the normal like menu when you go to like restaurants. It's it's just a one-off, and the the Thai people they don't eat scorpions <laughs> like every week like for dinner and and all the different bugs. The second layer is the spouse value, which is the reflection of norms and practices that bind the group together with unity. This espoused values act as a guidance to certain kind of practices or behavior that identify the group characteristic, and it also guide them、um, to react to a certain situation with certain kind of behavior. Okay. Yes.、Uh, when I first met my girlfriend, and、uh, we was going. Out for the day, I've always been one for holding hands and being the guy,、like, the gentleman. And、um, sometimes I'd I'd want to put my arm like a, around like my girlfriend while we're in、um, busy like places, just to stay like close like together. But she was pushing me away, and、uh, she didn't like. It at all, and she said in Thai culture we don't do like this, and in in, in public, yes. And、uh, I was taken aback by that, and I was thinking、oh, we're only holding hands. Yeah, maybe not like hugging or putting the arm like around her, but holding hands. I thought, what what is the problem like with this? The third layer is called deeply held assumption. Now, deeply held assumption may not be very easy to be observed, because it has been embedded under the subconscious of the people in the group. In the beginning, leaders of the group or the society, as well as the members, may come together when they face a particular problem. And they trial and error a number of solutions in order to answer to that particular problem. When they find the best solution that answer well and most suitably to that problem, they may continue to practice the same solution over and over again until, over time, they forgot、um, where this solution came from. And what solution?、Uh, what problem the solution try to answer? So the solution has been taken for granted over time,、um, and it is not very easy to tease out this deeply held assumption.、Uh, my name is Denise. I've been in Thailand for twelve years. I'm Victoria. I'm from a town called Crawley in England, between London and Brighton.、Yeah. I think a lot of people here are very reserved to share their opinion if they see a difference in power or superiority. Even if they see you as more educated than themselves, it's almost like they just want to say up to you. It's only your decision. We hear that so yeah, often. Yeah, it's very difficult to. To gain somebody's trust and to give them that space to share their opinion, because、mm. everyone has different levels of expertise, 
but they've come from different places. Song having more experience than you when you started, but he just saw it as Denise has come in, she is my boss, we will do her ideas, we will make that work. Something that I found very frustrating when I first came to Thailand, uh, it doesn't come up often, but if you had something urgent that you needed doing, whether it was with your visa or your passport, some kind of problem, in England you could look online or you could ask somebody and there would be a phone number, there'd be a department, there would be someone who specialises in that that has your answer. Mm. But here you kind of have to really chase it, you go from place to place, person to person, trying to get the solution mm -hmm. and quite often there might not be a black and white one or they're not sure or they ask you to go somewhere else and that can be very difficult. And you send back to the first place. That's it, you go around in circles a lot here. Mm -hmm. I would say that that comes with freedom as well, like here I like how relaxed certain things are. Mm -hmm. Some of my friends here have started businesses and there's not as many hoops to jump through or as much red tape as there mm -hmm. would be in England. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's give and take on that. Sometimes it's frustrating when you there's no set answer immediately to your problem, um, but sometimes it comes with a lot of freedom. So. It may not be wrong when people define culture as things people do around here, but we should be aware after understand that culture has three properties, that there is always a reason beneath those things that people do around them. As news about malpractices being broadcast time and time again against the backdrop of humanitarian development worldwide. One of the questions raised by this situation is, is there a new way to manage humanitarian assistance? Can language and cultural learning help address the failure in the community assistance? The statistics suggest that more than 70% of change initiatives have failed, and they have failed spectacularly. One example being migrant education programs that are supposed to help children who escape crisis from their home country has somehow marginalized the children of the host community who go to the same school as the migrant students. Another real world example being livelihood development, plan to help refugees to have a better living condition, have failed to understand the culture of the refugees and therefore misled program activities into a totally wrong direction language and cultural learning can help foster trust within the community the program is implementing. It can be a strategy that lead organizations to sustainable change. Earth International Foundation has designed Raw Thailand as a program for language and cross-cultural learning. Raw stands for Rigorous Application in Cultural Web. It uses experiential learning as a method to obtain tacit knowledge, which cannot be taught through formal education in the classroom. Now, learning a language in a new culture takes time. It also requires to integrate the understanding on cultural intelligence into language lessons. Raw students will have the opportunity 
to live and work with local Thai community where they can review the knowledge that they receive from the classroom, make adjustment to the applications they intend to pivot for personal or organizational objective in four weeks. Our program has four learning modules, all of which have to be taken in order to complete the course. The first module is Bangkok Orientation, which starts on the 1st of December 2019 in the facility in Bangkok Financial District on Silong Road. Now, the training facility in Bangkok is at the same location as the lodging station. Students will arrive on the 1st of December. They will take language and cultural classes approximately six hours per day. After they finish the Bangkok orientation phase, they will move to the second module in Kanchanaburi. module is urbanized cultural learning which will take place in Ganjanaburi, a province approximately 160 kilometers west of Bangkok. During this module, students will continue to enhance their knowledge in Thai language and cross-cultural intelligence. But apart from language and cultural classes, there are several cultural heritage sites that students will be able to visit during the time off from class. One place is Wat Tham Su, which is a Buddhist temple sitting on top of the mountain in Ganjanaburi. It is quite a spectacular sight to see. There is also Mueang Malika, which is a mock-up Thai city setting in the 1800th century. This is the place where students will be able to observe the origin of Thai culture where it is formulated. Raw Thailand has also prepared an excursion activity to bring students to visit Erawan Waterfall, located in one of Thailand's National Forest. Like in Bangkok, students will be housed in a three-star hotel on a double occupancy basis. The third module the highlight of the RAW program is the homestay with local Thai families. This is the time the students will be able to take the knowledge on language and culture that they learn from the classroom and put it in real use. Students will be staying with local Thai families in a substandard condition as part of the experiential learning. They will also be working in community development with local leaders. Yes, so the first time I experienced the mosquito net, you do feel a bit claustrophobic and um, it does take a bit of getting quite used to when you're, when you're not experienced it like before. But it's, it's, no, it's no big problem. I'd rather sleep underneath a mosquito net than get bit by the mosquitoes like, all night. Is there anything that you miss in England? My, my answer I always do. Number one, my family. Okay. Number two, carpets. Carpets. Oh, yeah. Carpets. <laughs> Why? Because it's lovely under your feet. Ah, okay. When I go home, I love to just take my shoes off and walk on my mum's carpet. It's lovely. Okay. 
strange answer, but it's very true. Interesting. Being comfortable in general is very different here. Um, comfortable beds, beds, wooden chairs, anything like that. It's just the furniture here is not that comfortable. The little mm. luxury, the plush things that we have in England to make okay. a home a home. After the five-day homestay with Thai families, students will be brought back into the fourth module, the personal development. During the personal development module, trainers and students will be working together on a one-on-one -on -one basis to achieve any personal objective that the students may have. If the student do not have any specific objective for their personal project, then the trainers will help them to improve their skills based on the lessons that they have already learned. The students will also undergo language and cultural appraisal during this module. The purpose of the appraisal is not to pass or to fail the students, but rather to identify how the students should continue with their future learning. In the year of the year, the students will start to build the skills. The students who come to the field will see the life of their life. ในช่วงนั้นด้วยก็นับว่าหาได้น้อยดูได้น้อยในในโลกเราเนี่ยเกี่ยวกับการทำงานเริ่มหมดก็ฝากบอกว่าก็อยากให้มานะคะมาในหมู่บ้านในชุมชนของเราเพราะเยาวชนของเราเนี่ยด้อยค่ะด้อยเรื่องการภาษาจากภาษาเนี่ยคนไทยเราด้อยมากก็อยากเล็กไปเรียนรู้ได้สักสิบคำยี่สิบคำก็ถือว่าเราคุ้มค่ะคุ้มกับที่ที่นักศึกษาจะมาให้ความมั่นใจได้เลยว่าชาวบ้านของชาวตำบลธรรมขามเนี่ยครอบครัวที่เปิดรับนักศึกษาที่ว่าให้เข้ามาเรียนรู้เนี่ยทุกคนเป็นมิตรมีความจริงใจทุกทุกครอบครัวครับครับทางเราก็ยินดีนะครับยินดีต้อนรับอาสาสมัครที่จะมาอยู่กับครอบครัวเรานะฮะก็ผมก็มีลูกชายเล็กๆก็อยากให้เรียนรู้ภาษาให้ให้ให้ให้มากขึ้นครับให้เก่งกว่ากว่านี้ฮะถึงจะมาอยู่ช่วงระยะเวลาที่น้อยแต่เราก็ดีใจนะครับที่ได้มีอาสาสมัครเข้ามาช่วยให้เด็กๆแต่ในชุมชนเราได้มีความรู้เพิ่มขึ้นนะฮะเรายินดีต้อนรับครับยินดีต้อนรับอย่างมากครับ We can use lotus pond as an analogy to better understand the essence of culture. Edgar Schein said, the lotus flower emerging above the surface of the pond can be analogous to the artifact visible for our observation in plain sight. The stem can be compared as a spoused belly, and the root buried beneath the pond the underlying assumption. Cultural congruency and the lack thereof is as a result of how cultural artifact, espoused value, and underlying assumption are combined together. If the lotus root can draw healthy nutrients and the stem passes on these nutrients to the lotus, the lotus will bloom into a beautiful flower. On the other hand, if the environment surrounding the lotus becomes toxic, the lotus might not yield. We may want to ask a question at this point. How will a lotus adjust itself if the environment ever become toxic. 
Earth International Foundation would like to invite you to be a part of the learning experience that would last a lifetime. We are proud to say that after four weeks of learning with us, you'll be walking away with the proficiency in Thai language, reading, writing, communicating cross-culturally and effectively. Make a difference for yourself and for those you work with. Join Raw Thailand this December. We are excited to share with you what we have to offer. We are also eager to learn from your culture as well. Visit us at earthinter.org E-A-R-T-H-I-N-T-E-R dot O-R-G and we hope to see you in Thailand soon. Thank you.